Hello, good morning, future educators. Welcome to this topic about Ganya's conditions of learning. So this is still under cognitive perspectives, okay? So you can draw similarities on the theories that I'll be discussing today to the theories that we've, uh, we have already discussed, like the IPT or the information processing theory. So this topic is very significant to all of you future educators because this will help you to present your lesson in a logical or scientific manner okay so you have to bear in mind these principles that we are going to discuss today so with this topic uh, I, we have here our learning objectives so at the end of this you'll be able to explain Ganya's conditions of learning make a simple lesson outline using Ganya's instruction events and articulate the benefits of using Ganya's principles in teaching so you have to expect guys that you'll be doing some kind of workshop at the end of this lecture video okay that's for for deepening and for course practice of learning so i'd like to start this lesson by having this kind of activity so you can recall your prior experience in uh during your high school days or elementary days how did your teachers present your lessons okay or if you have already studied about this one then you can recall your the information that you have on this or you can make a, a guess okay on how to present the lesson um scientifically so you have to arrange these steps okay from the first one to the last one okay so please Feel free to pause this video so you'll have more time in answering your activity. Later on, I'll be presenting the answers uh, for this, okay? Right. All right. So, these are the general principles based on Ganyin. Okay, there are actually three general principles for this. First, we have Different instruction is required for different learning outcomes. Definitely different topics, and of course, different uh, different subjects require different learning outcomes. And in each learning outcome, there must be a specific instruction that you have to use. Okay, there's no one instruction fits all. Okay, so you have to determine which is the best instruction that you can use. For this particular learning outcomes. So Ganya categorized uh, learning into five. So we have verbal instruction, intellectual skills, cognitive strategies, attitudes, and motor skills. Let's start with verbal instruction. It is an example of a learning outcome and let's see later on what are the conditions of learning that you have to meet as a teacher. So stating previously learned materials such as facts, concepts, principles, and procedures. For example, um, identify the three phases of matter. That's verbal uh, verbal information. That's uh, that's uh, based on this learning outcome. Or um, or or identify the fourteen uh, learner-centered psychological principles. This is still a recall of information, okay? Well, it's easy for us to say that, okay, at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to, to, to memorize this one, you'll be able to do this one. But you know what? It's very challenging in part of the students to memorize concepts, okay? To memorize facts and principles. So what are the things that you have to consider, teacher, in order, for, in order to help your students retain the facts or the concepts the principles that you're teaching them so you can make use of these conditions first you draw an attention to distinctive features by variations in print or speech so if you have given them a print material then you make sure that you have to emphasize the important terms in there all right so how are you going to do that if it's in print you can embolden you can italicize right you can highlight specific words phrases or sentences in the text 
if it is a verbal instruction, okay, if it is, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's lecture, okay, you can vary your pitch, you can vary the tone of your voice to emphasize a specific word or important word in your discussion, okay? So you can increase the volume of your voice if you are pertaining to a, uh, to us, uh, to an important term, okay? So the pupils or the learners will think, oh, okay, that's, uh, it's important, uh, uh, it's in an important term, so I have to take note of that, okay? So that can be useful. And present information so that it can be made into chunks. So diff there are different ways to present information to your pupils. Yeah, you can u make use of the print material. You can make use of verbal instruction. You can present it using technology, using PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Yeah, you can make use of those of, of projectors and so on and so forth. So that after presenting them, you, they can make use of uh, of. Uh, uh, organizational chart or I mean or no, 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 charts or what do you call that um, graphic organizers okay you can make use of graphic organize they can make use of graphic organizers so that they can chunk the information okay remember that there's a limitation in our in our memory okay and we cannot really grasp you know a um, ton of information in just a single time Okay, so we have to chunk it, okay, and then we have to absorb it one at a time, all right? And then provide the meaningful context for effective encoding of information. Since it's, uh, it's factual, it's, it's uh, you know, it's a recall of information, it's better if you can contextualize your lesson. How are you going to do that? You identify who are your students, okay, and then from that, uh, you look at your lesson. How are they going to apply your lesson or their learning in your lesson to their lives? Okay? So, for example, for this lesson, uh, I'm going to contextualize, contextualize this lesson through putting yourself in the shoe of a teacher since you are future educators. Okay? So, as a teacher, how are you going to apply this um these uh, conditions of learning or what are the benefits of this for you as a future teacher? What are the realizations that you can make? Okay, that's it. So you provide them with context. Okay, so you can make, you can actually, um, since your students, for example, you're teaching in high school or elementary, you can group them and then have them or give them, them an activity, give them a context in which that kind of learner that they, learning that they have will be applied and each group will be presenting in front so that they would realize oh, okay it can be applied in this kind of context it can be applied in this kind of context so well they they will also learn from their classmates okay right and provide cues for effective recall and generalization of information your knowledge in IPT is very significant here okay there are different ways to recall information to have cues for recall of information, they can make use of mnemonics. They can make use. Of, they can make use of the mental pictures that they imagine when they're learning the the lesson. Okay, and so on and so forth. Right. So you, there, you, you can apply. You can recall the, the information, uh, the knowledge that you have in IPT for this. Okay. Second one is intellectual skills. So, sample learning outcome. For discrimination, distinguishing objects, uh, objects, features, or symbols. So, for example, classifying or classify biodegradable to non-biodegradable. That's discrimination, okay? Or concrete objects. So, for example, um, um, yeah, you can make use of this. You let the students uh, pick out all the red beads from a ball of beads. So, in, so from the word itself, concrete, right? They'll be doing something to concretize their learning. So it's not just about telling them what is color red. It's not just about identifying which one is color red. Then they can make use of this activity. They can pick out, you know, the red beads from bowl of beads. So you put, for example, different colors of beads in the bowl, and then they're just going to pick up the red uh, uh, beads. So this is particular, this is very um, helpful for elementary pupils, okay? Uh, defined concepts so they can instead of giving them for example instead of 
um, of, of matching the term to their definition, why not the term to example? Okay, you provide them example, right? Instead of the definition of that for for, for activity. Okay, for example, she sells she uh, she sells seashells. So this is an example of an alliteration. Okay, so what is an alliteration? Um, it's a uh, you know repeti repetition of consonant sound in the initial sound of a word. So in this example, the sh sound is being repeated like she sells seashells. Okay, or rules as well. So they can make use of this computing average monthly income of a company or applying a balanced budget for a school organization. So as you can see also the examples here are contextualized since you know some of you mm, will become um, education leaders uh, soon okay or school leaders soon so some of you will, will be um, a master teacher a department head right the principal supervisor and so on and so forth so yeah it, this is contextualized. Okay, conditions of learning, how are you going to, 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 to deliver your lesson well with, these kinds, with those kinds of learning outcomes? First, you call information for distinctive features. Again, um, if the information was not attended to, then it will not be remembered by the pupils. So the first thing that you have to do, you call for information. Specifically, you direct their attention to the distinctive features or the most important information in your lesson. Stay within the limits of working memory. So how many chunks of information can they, they grasp in the, uh, in the working memory? So do not give them, do not overwhelm them with information. Okay, you have to balance the information that you provide to your pupils or else they will not be learning something. Okay, they will not be grasping the information you're teaching them. Stimulate the recall of previously learned components or skills. So after that, after uh, uh, you identify that one, you get the, the attention of the learners, then you provide them with recall. So what's the benefits of having or of recalling the information uh, amongst your students or pupils? Uh, they can make use of connections. If they recall the information, uh, they can make use of connection. What's the connection of that to the, to the lesson at hand? So they, uh, and that, that will increase also the retention of your learners okay present verbal cues after that then you give the instruction to your pupils or to your learners okay you give them verbal cues okay to the ordering or combination of component skills and then after that after you taught them after you delivered the lesson then they have to deepen their knowledge to that so they have you have to provide them activities so that they can practice uh, the learning that they have, okay? In a particular context, of course. Use a variety of contexts to promote transfer. That's, that's what I was telling, okay? So you make sure that uh, they can use that in different contexts, right? Okay, and next is, uh, next category is the cognitive um, strategies. Example of learning outcomes. We have employing personal ways to guide learning, thinking, acting, and feeling. So, for example, constructing concept maps of topics being studied. So, that's the objective. So, let's see how we're going to achieve this one. Uh, first, you have to describe and demonstrate the strategy. So, we're going to discuss them, what is a concept map. And then you demonstrate how do they use or how to use the concept map. Okay, you give them examples. You demonstrate them how to do it, okay? And then you provide a variety of occasions for practice using this strategy. So you, you can group them again, since that's, uh, you know, the trend nowadays, cooperative learning. You try to group them and then have them practice uh, using a concept map, okay? You give them situations. And then provide informative feedback as to the creativity or originality of the strategy or outcome. Okay, you let them, for example, after doing that one, after applying the uh, concept map, then you have to let them um, present in front so that the other learners will also learn from their classmates. And then for that, you'll give them feedback. 
okay, as to what this, what's the strength of their output, what are the areas of uh, improvement that they have to make, okay? Next, uh, fourth one is the attitude. Example of learning outcome, um, choosing personal actions based on internal states of understanding and feeling. Example, deciding to avoid soft drinks and, thinking at, and drinking at least eight glasses of water every day. So at the end of this, they must have this decision not to drink soft drinks anymore and they would drink eight glasses, at least eight glasses of water every day. So attitude, attitude this is about a, the effective domain. All right. So conditions of learning establish an expectancy of success associated with the desired uh, attitude. All right. So you have to give them an expectations. All right. Of the learning, so you can give them your objectives. Okay. Assure student identification with an admired human model, so you can present them as well in own personality, um, in which they can emulate. Okay. There must be a model. Of probably you can present them a known personality who has this healthy lifestyle, who doesn't drink um, soft drinks, and who uh, uh, drinks at least eight glasses of water a day. And then you can observe their body, okay, the figure of their body. You can um, observe their activities, whether it's active or not, okay. So from that, they can. They can uh, actually emulate that one and they can be inspired as well as uh, in, in doing the activity. Arrange for communication or demonstration of choice of personal action. So they would demonstrate it. Um, it's, it's up on the creativity of the teacher. How are they, how um, will she or he can assess uh, about the decision or output of the students, okay? After that, then you give feedback. For the performance or allow observation or feedback in the human model okay well um definitely of uh, the effect of that cannot be of course it cannot be seen immediately right after the lesson okay they'll have a healthier body a healthier lifestyle you cannot measure that in a single meeting okay but you can make use of probably they can you can give them a written activity uh that's stating that they would, uh, you know, uh, they would decide or they would uh, pledge not to drink soft drinks anymore, but they they're going to drink eight glasses of water uh, a day. Okay, so you think, and then have them present that one. So it could be it could be done, right? And then you can just observe them if they're really doing it so or not, or you can have. Um, an assessment again after a week, right? A written assessment or presentation if they have, uh, you know, achieved uh, what their all, uh, what what uh, their pledges are. Okay, so you can make use of that. And again, you can give feedback after the lesson. Okay, and then the last one is motor skills. Example of learning is doing the steps of sing kill dance. So this is more particular to the BPED major, okay, or, or even BED students, okay? So conditions of learning, present verbal or other guidance to cue the, uh, to cue the executive sub-sub uh, routines. So you can do this, of course, they didn't, didn't know exactly what is single dance, so you give them instruction, you give them verbal cues, okay, you're going to instruct them, uh, and you're going to show them how to do that. Okay, so the demonstration uh, method will be used here. Okay, and then arrange repeated practice. Definitely after demonstration, after observing that one, they cannot really perform it perfectly. Okay, they need repeated practice. So you allow them, you give them that time for practice. Okay, and then fin uh, furnish immediate feedback as to the accuracy of performance. In giving them practice, uh, do not just let them do what they want to do, okay? Or sometimes, you know, what we do is, okay, you give them practice, okay, I'll try 15 minutes to practice and then teacher leaves, okay, the classroom or teacher do, uh, I mean, I mean, uh, teacher will uh, check paper, for example. It's not like that, okay? If you give them practice, uh, if you give them time to practice, you have to monitor if they're doing it 
uh, correctly or not. Because if not, then probably what they what they will be presenting is not also accurate. Okay, so you give them feedback immediately. Okay, and then encourage the use of mental practice. After that, they can actually imagine. Okay, um, you can imagine doing the dance, for instance. Uh, doing the dance in their mind okay so with that they can recall the the steps okay in doing the single dance okay next general principle is learning hierarchies define what intellectual skills are to be learned in a sequence of instruction so there is according to Ganya there's a hierarchy of learning okay there's uh, when we say hierarchy there's a rank Actually, so you cannot proceed to the other or to the last step unless you go to the next stages. Okay, so it's just like that. All right, you can simply jump to the next stages. You have to accomplish the task or the things that you have to accomplish in each level before going to the to the last level. Mm -hmm. So to uh, to concretize this one, we have this example. So. This is the, the hierarchy, okay? You cannot simply go to problem solving straightly. For example, you do if you do that, then they wouldn't know what to do, okay? Because you didn't give them an instruction yet. You cannot go to discriminations immediately because they wouldn't know the answer for that, okay? So the first thing that you have to do, you give them stimulus, okay? There must be stimulus recognition, response generation, procedure, okay? That's when you teach your lesson. Use of terminology, discriminations, concept formation, rule application, and then after they apply the rule, they can make use of problem solving. Okay? So if you remember your lesson when you were in elementary, you, your teacher didn't, didn't let you solve addition problems immediately. Okay? Of course, they need to teach first how to do the addition, okay? the, the steps, okay? identifying the problem, right operations to be used so these are the rules right so they cannot really you can let us a pupil solve a an addition problem without you teaching them how to do it first okay so that's the principle of this okay next is events are of learning operate on the learner in ways that constitute the conditions of learning so i'll be presenting you also another lesson sample for this so that it will be concretized, okay? So see how how it is being applied in uh, in teaching, okay? And this will also be the answer, okay, to the activity that you did a while ago. So before I present this, um, you get the piece of paper where you wrote your answers in uh, the, the activity that you did prior to the presentation of the lesson. So you arrange, you know, the steps that the teacher would do. So let's see if your answers here are correct. So first, gaining attention, right? First, first thing to do. Second, informing learners of the objective. Okay, so if you get the attention or motivation, what are the objectives? It's very important, again, to share objectives so that they'll know what to, they'll have an expectation of the lesson. So if you can remember as well, in this lesson, I also shared a lesson objective to you guys okay stimulate recall of prior learning or retrieval okay so you make use of you can connect actually the lesson at hand to the lesson that you have before okay um doing that so will help uh, the retention of of the learners okay if you can also remember guys i let you imagine and let you recall your knowledge on ipt which was our last topic okay and then present the stimulus, that's when you present your lesson to your pupils. Provide learning guidance, okay? So you ask them questions, you ask for clarifications, okay? So if there is a, mis a misunderstanding, a misconception, you clarify it, okay? And then elicit performance, okay? And then if you see that they've already understood that one, then you give them activity, okay? All right, in which they can use the lear learning that they have. Then you give them feedback based on the output that they have. So you can assess their performance, okay? You can tell the areas of improvement, the, the things that did, they did well, okay? And then you enhance retention and transfer, okay? That's already in the, the generalization, 
Okay? So those are the steps that you have to do. This is already in order. So who among you have gotten the perfect score? So congratulations to those who didn't. It's still good. At least now you know already the sequence. Okay? Right. So this is an example of a lesson outline following uh, the sequence that we've uh, talked about a while ago. So this is a to this the topic is PowerPoint lessons with power uh, PowerPoint lessons with PowerPoint. Um, create your objective. Create lessons using Microsoft PowerPoint in target group. This lesson uh, is geared for education students. You okay with basic computer uh, knowledge. Alright, so I'll be presenting you here a sample lesson plan. Right. Okay, let me flash it first in the presentation so you can uh, uh, see it. Right? So there, wait. Okay. Alright. Okay, so there you are. Okay, so so these are the condition. These are the events of instruction. These are the conditions of learning. And let's see what's the rationale, okay, behind these um, learnings, okay, or behind these conditions of learning. So there you are. Okay, first gaining attention. That's the first step, right? Okay, first procedure. Teacher tells learners how she has used PowerPoint in the classroom, shows an example of a PowerPoint, and then asks learners questions about using PowerPoint. What's the rationale? Why do the teacher why does the teacher need to do that? Well, giving background information creates validity. The use of multimedia itself grabs the the audience attention asking questions in the beginning creates an interactive atmosphere okay make sure however if you if you ask question make sure it's not intimidating okay it's friendly okay you let errors um happen in your classroom because learning is also a trial and error okay all right so next is informing the learner of the objective okay um if you can recall uh, our lessons, the previous lessons that we have, I always do this. Okay, so today we're going to study about Ganya's uh, conditions of learning. Today we'll be learning about information processing theory, and then after that, I share, I give background information, and then I share with you guys the objective of objectives of the lesson. Why? Because um, it gives expectations, okay, of the lesson, in part of the learners, and then. Stimulating recall of, of, inf of uh, learning. So for this particular group of learners, uh, they have learned they have learned previously about Microsoft Windows, particularly Microsoft Word. Teacher associates this knowledge with lesson at hand. So there's an association. Again, you connect, you do review because you associate your prior lesson to the lesson at hand. So when learning something new, assessing prior knowledge is a major factor, so you do not forget that one, okay? It's actually part of the lesson plan. If you'll be writing your lesson plan soon, it's part of the lesson plan. After motivation, it's a uh, review, okay? All right. And then, we also, we also have presenting stimulus. Teacher gives students hands-on, step-by-step tutorial on using PowerPoint presentation so that's the strategy of the teacher why the goal is inform information acquisition therefore the stimulus employed is written content in the actual software program so there's a lot of learning by doing it there and then provide learner guidance teacher demonstrates how to create a presentation teacher moves uh, moves around and shows students how to use the tools to type text Add links and symbols and flip arts, insert videos and diagrams, use sounds, etc. Learners are allowed to try the tools demonstrated in partners' 
uh, in partners on their computer. So there, if there's no enough uh, units of computer, then they can do it with pair. Okay, so you have to monitor your pupils. You go, you go there in their places one by one to see if they're doing it uh, uh, correctly. Teachers uses discovery learning because learners are adults and it gives them the freedom to explore. Remember, the students here are play service teachers. Teachers, a teacher facilitates the learning process by giving hints and cues when needed. Since the audience are play service uh, teachers with some basic level of technology skills and some, and the software program is easy to follow and understand. Guidance is minimal. Okay, fair. Eliciting performance, teacher asks students to demonstrate PowerPoint presentation or PowerPoint tools. Um, rationale, requiring the learner to produce based on what has been taught enables the learners to confirm their learning. Regular feedback enhances learning. Okay, so they're going to make something here already based on the learnings that they have and then have it presented. To the teacher and then or, or even to their classmates and then giving feedback teacher gives feedback immediately to the learners after eliciting responses okay well immediate feedback is very necessary because um that's for, for them to easily and to to correct or to improve their output uh, immediately okay and then you assess a you assess the performance Independent practice forces in students to use what they learn and apply it, and apply it. Um, assessing such assessing such gives instruct instructors a means of testing in student learning outcomes, right? And so on and so forth. Okay, so these are yeah. Okay. Well guys, I'll just be sending this to our Google Classroom so that you can still review this one. Okay? Because this is also what you're going to do in your activity. You're going to make use of this, okay? You, here you go, event of instruction, lesson, example of conditions of learning, and then you make use of the rationale, okay? So, as for, for uh, your activity, okay, there you go, uh, form groups with four members, okay? So make sure you pick a member who, who has the same specialization with you. So dapat magkakasama yung mga math, magkakasama yung mga English, KB ed, right? And then you decide a topic. If uh, if wala nang choice, may isa yung natira, then pwede na siguro yung five member kung may natira isa. Okay? Yan. So very. And then make a teaching sequence applying Ganya's nine instructional events. So, there, after deciding for a topic, you can you have to make uh, you have to create um, um, a teaching sequence applying Ganya's nine uh, instructional events. Okay, so you have um, two days to make this one. You're gonna submit it by next meeting. All right. So um, after this lesson, please make some realizations as well. On the benefits of using um, Ganya's uh, conditions of learning. How will it help you become an effective teacher? I'll leave you that question to you guys. For that, this is my reference and thank you so much. See you next meeting.